Within the gates that a man shall go, full warily let him watch, full long let him look about him, for little he knows where a foe may lurk, and sit in the seats within. Hail to the giver, a guest has come, where shall the stranger sit? Swift shall he be who with sword shall try the proof of his might to make. Fire he needs who with frozen knees has come from the cold without, food and clothes must the fairer have, the man from the mountains come. Water and towels and welcoming speech should he find who comes to the feast. If renown he would get and again be greeted wisely and well must he act. Wits must he have who wanders wide, but all is easy at home. At the witless man the wise shall wink when among such men he sits. A man shall not boast of his keenness of mind, but keep it close in his breast to the silent and wise does ill come seldom when he goes as guest to a house, for a faster friend one never finds than wisdom tried and true. The knowing guest who goes to the feast in silent attention sits with his ears he hears, with his eyes he watches, thus wary are wise men all. Happy the one who wins for himself favor and praises fair, less safe by far is the wisdom found that is hid in another's heart. Happy the man who has while he lives wisdom and praise as well, for evil counsel a man full oft has from another's heart. A better burden may no man bear for wanderings wide than wisdom. It is better than wealth on unknown ways, and in grief a refuge it gives. A better burden may no man bear for wanderings wide than wisdom. Worse food for the journey he brings not a field than an over-drinking of ale. Less good there lies than most believe in ale for mortal men, for the more he drinks the less does man of his mind the mastery hold. Over beer the bird of forgetfulness broods and steals the minds of men. With the Huron's feathers fettered I lay, and in Gunloth's house was held. Drunk I was, I was dead drunk, when with Falyar wise I was. Tis the best of drinking if back one brings his wisdom with him home. The son of a king shall be silent and wise and bold in battle as well. Bravely and gladly a man shall go till the day of his death is come. The sluggard believes he shall live forever if the fight he faces not. But age shall not grant him the gift of peace, though spears may spare his life. The fool is a gape. When he comes to the feast, he stammers or else is still. But soon, if he gets a drink, is it seen what the mind of the man is like? He alone is aware, who has wandered wide and far abroad has fared, how great a mind is guided by him that wealth of wisdom has. Shun not the mead, but drink in measure, speak to the point or be still. For rudeness none shall rightly blame thee, if soon thy bed thou seekest. The greedy man, if his mind be vague, will eat till sick he is. The vulgar man, when among the wise, to scorn by his belly is brought. The herds know well when home they shall fare, and then from the grass they go. But the foolish man, his belly's measure, shall never know aright. A paltry man, and poor of mind, at all things ever mocks, for never he knows what he ought to know, that he is not free from faults. The witless man is awake all night, thinking of many things. Careworn he is when the morning comes, and his woe is just as it was. The foolish man, for friends all those who laugh at him will hold, when among the wise he marks it not, though hatred of him they speak. The foolish man, for friends all those who laugh at him will hold, but the truth when he comes to the counsel he learns that few in his favor will speak. An ignorant man thinks that all he knows when he sits by himself in a corner, but never what answer to make he knows when others with questions come. A witless man, when he meets with men, 
had best in silence abide, for no one shall find that nothing he knows, uh, if his mouth is not open too much. But a man knows not if nothing he knows when his mouth has been opened too much. Wise shall he seem, who well can question and also answer well. Naught is concealed that men may say among the sons of men. Often he speaks, who never is still with words that win no faith. The babbling tongue, if a bridle it find not oft for itself, sings ill. In mockery no one a man shall hold, although he fare to the feast. In mockery no one a man shall hold, although he fare to the feast. Wise seems one oft, if not he is asked, and safely he sits dry skin. Wise a guest holds it to take to his heels, when mock of another he makes. But little he knows, who laughs at the feast, though he mocks in the midst of his foes. Friendly of mind are many men, till feasting they mock at their friends. To mankind a bane must it ever be when guests together strive. Oft should one make an early meal, nor fasting come to the feast, else he sits and chews as if he would choke and little is able to ask. Crooked and far is the road to a foe, though his house on the highway be, but wide and straight is the way to a friend, though far away he fare. Forth shall one go, nor stay as a guest in a single spot forever. Love becomes loathing if long one sits by the hearth in another's home. Better a house, though a hut it be, a man is master at home. A pair of goats and a patched-up roof are better far than begging. Better a house, though a hut it be, a man is master at home. His heart is bleeding, who needs must beg when food he fain would have. Away from his arms, in the open field, a man should fare not a foot, for never he knows when the need for a spear shall arise on the distant road. If wealth a man has one for himself, let him never suffer in need. Oft he saves for a foe what he plans for a friend. For much goes worse than we wish. None so free with gifts or food have I found that gladly he took not a gift, nor one who so widely scattered his wealth that of recompense hatred he had. Friends shall gladden each other with arms and garments, as each for himself can see gift givers as friendships are longest found, if fair their fates may be. To his friend a man, a friend shall prove, and gifts with gifts requite. But men shall mocking with mockery answer, and fraud with falsehood meet. To his friend a man, a friend shall prove, to him and the friend of his friend. But never a man shall friendship make, with one of his foeman's friends. If a friend thou hast, whom thou fully with trust and good from him wouldst get, thy thoughts with his mingle and gifts shalt thou make, and fare to find him oft. If another, if another thou hast, whom thou hardly will trust, yet good from him wouldst get, thou shalt speak him fair, but falsely think, and fraud with falsehood requite. So is it with him whom thou hardly wilt trust, and whose mind thou mayst not know, laugh with him mayst thou, but speak not thy mind, like gifts to his shalt thou give. Young was I once, and wandered alone, and not of the road I knew. Rich did I feel, when a comrade I found, for man is man's delight. The lives of the brave and noble are best, sorrows they seldom feed. But the coward fear of all things feels, and not gladly the niggard gives. My garments once in a field I gave to a pair of carven poles. Heroes they seemed, when clothes they had, but the naked man is not. On the hillside drear the fir tree dies, all bootless its needles and bark. It is like a man whom no one loves. Why should his life be long? Hotter than fire, between false friends does friendship five days burn, when the sixth day comes, the fire cools, and in it is all the love. No greater thing needs a man to give, off little will purchase praise, with half a loaf and a half-filled cup, a friend full fast I made. A little sand has a little sea, 
and small are the minds of men. Though all men are not equal in wisdom, yet half-wise only are all. A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. The fairest lives. Do those men live whose wisdom wide has grown? A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. For the wise man's heart is seldom happy if wisdom too great he has won. A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. Let no man the fate before him see, for so is he freest from sorrow. A brand from a brand is kindled and burned, and fire from fire begotten. And man by his speech is known to men, and the stupid by their stillness. He must early go forth, who fain the blood or the goods of another would get. The wolf that lies idle shall win little meat, or the sleeping man success. He must early go forth, whose workers are few, himself his work to seek. Much remains undone for the morning sleeper, for the swift is wealth half won. Of seasoned shingles and strips of bark, for the thatch let one know his need, and how much of wood he must have for a month, or in half a year he will use. Washed and fed to the council fair, but care not too much for thy clothes. Let none be ashamed of his shoes and hose, lest still of the steed he rides, though poor be the horse he has. When the eagle comes to the ancient sea, he snaps and hangs his head. So is a man in the midst of a throng, who few to speak for him finds. To question and answer must all be ready who wish to be known as wise. Tell one thy thoughts, but beware of two, all know what is known to three. The man who is prudent, a measured use of the might he has will make. He finds when among the brave he fares, that the boldest he may not be. Lahuna. A man must be watchful and wary as well, lacuna, and fearful of trusting a friend, oft for the words that to others one speaks, he will get but an evil gift. A man must be watchful and wary as well, and fearful of trusting a friend, oft for the words that to others one speaks, he will get but an evil gift. Too early to many a meeting I came, and some too late have I sought. The beer was all drunk, or not yet brewed, little the loathed man finds. To their homes men would bid me hither and yon, if at mealtime I needed no meat. I would hang two hams in my true friend's house, where only one I had eaten. Fire for men is the fairest gift, and power to see the sun. Health as well, if a man may have it, and a life not stained with sin. All wretched is no man, though never so sick. Some from their sons have joy, some win it from kinsmen, and some from their wealth, and some from worthy works. It is better to live than to lie a corpse, the live man catches the cow. I saw flames rise for the rich man's pyre, and before his door he lay dead. The lame rides a horse, the handless is herdsman, the deaf in battle is bold. The blind man is better than one that is burned. No good can come of a corpse. A son is better, though late he be born, and his father to death have fared. Memory stones seldom stand by the road, save when kinsman honors his kin. To make a battle, the tongue slays the head, in each furry coat a fist I look for. He welcomes the night, whose fare is enough. Short are the yards of a ship. Uneasy are autumn nights. Full oft does the weather change in a week and more in a month's time. A man knows not, if nothing he knows, that gold oft apes begets. One man is wealthy and one is poor, yet scorn for him none should know. Among fit young sons I saw I well-stocked folds. Now bear they the beggar's staff. Wealth is as swift as a winking eye of friends, the falsest it is. Cattle die and kinsmen die, and so one dies oneself. But a noble name will never die if good renown one gets. Cattle die and kinsmen die, and so one dies oneself. One thing now that never dies, the fame of a dead man's deeds. Certain is that which is sought from runes, and the gods so great have made, and the master poet painted, Lacuna. Lacuna of the race of gods, silence is safest and best. 
An unwise man, if a maiden's love of wealth he chances to win, his pride will wax, but his wisdom never. Straightforward he fares in conceit. Give praise to the day at evening, to a woman on her pyre, to a weapon which is tried, to a maid at wedlock, to ice when it is crossed, to ale that is drunk. When the gale blows, hew wood in fair winds, seek the water. Sport with maidens at dusk, for day's eyes are many. From the ship seek swiftness, from the shield protection. Cuts from the sword, from the maiden kisses. By the fire drink ale, over ice go on skates. By a steed that is lean, and a sword that... By a steed that is lean, and a sword when tarnished. The horse at home fatten, the hound in thy dwelling. A man shall trust not the oath of a maid, nor the word a woman speaks. For their hearts on a whirling wheel were fashioned, and fickle their breasts were formed. In a breaking bow, or a burning flame, a ravening wolf, or a croaking raven. In a grunting boar, a tree with roots broken, in billowy seas, or a bubbling kettle. In a flying arrow, or falling waters, in ice new formed of the serpent's folds. In a bride's bed speech, or a broken sword, in the sport of bears, or in sons of kings, in a calf that is sick, or a stubborn thrall, a flattering witch, or a foe new slain, in a brother's slayer, if thou meet'st him abroad, in a half-burned house, in a horse full swift, one leg is hurt, and the horse is useless, none had ever such faith as to trust in them all. Hope not too surely for early harvest nor trust too soon in thy son. The field needs good weather, the sun needs wisdom, and oft is either denied. The love of women, fickle of will, is like starting o'er ice, with a steed unshod, a two-year-old restive, and little tamed, or steering a rudderless ship in a storm, or lame, hunting reindeer on slippery rocks. Clear now will I speak, for I know them both, men false to women are found. When fairest we speak, then falsest we think, against wisdom we work with deceit. Soft words shall he speak, and wealth shall he offer, who longs for a maiden's love. And the beauty praise of the maiden bright, he wins whose wooing is best. Fault for loving, let no man find ever with any other. After the wise are fettered, where fools go free, by beauty that breeds desire. Fault with another, let no man find, for what touches many a man, wise man oft, into witless fools, and made by mighty love. The head alone knows what dwells near the heart. A man knows his mind alone. No sickness is worse to one who is wise than to lack the longed-for joy. This found I myself when I sat in the reeds, and long my love awaited as my life the maiden. Wise I loved, yet her I never had, Billing's daughter I found on her bed in slumber, bright as the sun, empty appeared, an earl's estate without that form so fair. Othan, again at evening come, if a woman thou wouldst win, evil it were, if others than we should know of such a sin. Away I hastened, hoping for joy, and careless of counsel wise, well I believed that soon I should win measureless joy with the maid. So came I next, when night it was, the warriors all were awake. With burning lights and waving brands, I learned my luckless way. At morning, then, when once more I came and all was sleeping still, a dog found in the fair one's place, beyond there upon her bed. Many fair maids, if a man but tries them false to a lover, are found. That did I learn when I longed to gain with wiles the maiden wise. Foul scorn was my mead from the crafty maid, and not from the woman I won. Though glad at home, and merry with guests, a man shall be wary and wise, the sage and shrewd, wide, wisdom-seeking, must see that his speech be fair. A fool is he named, who not can say, for such is the way of the witless. I found the old giant, now back have I fared, small gain from silence I got. Full many a word, my will to get, I spoke in Suttung's hall. The mouth of Ratti made room for my passage, and space in the stone he gnawed above and below, the giant's paths lay, so rashly I risked my head. Gunloth gave on a golden stool a drink of the marvellous mead. A harsh reward did I let her have for her heroic heart, and her spirit troubled sore. The well-earned beauty well I enjoyed, little the wise man lacks. 
So Othroras now has up been brought to the midst of the men of earth. Hardly methinks would I have hardly methinks would I home have come and left the giants' land had not Gunloth helped me, the maiden good whose arms about me had been the day that followed the frost giants came, some word of horror to win, and into the hall of horror of Bulwark they asked, Ah, were he back amidst the gods, or had Sutung slain him there? On his ring wore Othan, the oath, methinks, who now his troth shall trust. Sotung's betrayal he sought with drink, and Gunloth to grief he left. It is time to chant, from the chanter's stool, by the wells of Urth I was. I saw and was silent, I saw and thought, and heard the speech of Hor. Of runes heard I words, nor were counsels wanting at the hall of Hor. In the hall of Hor such was the speech I heard. I read thee, Lord Fafner. And hear thou my reed, prophet thou hast, if thou learnest, rise not at night, save if news thou seekest, or fain to the outhouse couldst fare. I read thee, Lord Fafner. And hear thou my reed, prophet thou hast, if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest, beware of sleep on a witch's bosom, nor let her limbs ensnare thee, such as her might that thou hast no mind for the counsel of meeting of men. Meat thou hatest, joy thou hast not, and sadly to slumber thou fairest. I read thee, Lord Fafner, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. Seek never to win the wife of another, or long for her secret love. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. If o'er mountains or gulfs thou faint wouldst go, look well to thy food for the way. I read thee, Lord Fafner, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast, if thou hearest, great thy gain, if thou learnest an evil man, thou must not let bring a right of ill to thee. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast, if thou hearest, great thy gain, if thou learnest an evil man, Thou must not let bring out of ill to thee, for an evil man will never make reward for a worthy thought. I s saw a man who was wounded sore by an evil woman's word. A lying tongue, his death blow launched, and no word of truth there was. I read thee, Lord Fafner, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast if thou hearest, grant thy gain if thou learnest. Prophet thy how I read thee, Lord Fafner, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest, if a friend thou hast, whom thou fully wilt trust, then fare to find him oft, for brambles grow and waving grass on the rarely trodden road. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest, a good man find to hold in friendship and give heed to his healing charms. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast, if thou hearest, great thy gain, if thou learnest. Be never the first to break with thy friend the bond that holds you both. Care eats the heart, if thou canst not speak to another all thy thought. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Prophet thou hast, if thou hearest, great thy gain, if thou learnest. Exchange of words with a witless ape thou must not ever make. For never thou mayest from an evil man a good requital get, but a good man oft the greatest love, through words of praise will win thee. Mingled is love when a man can speak to another all his thought, not as so bad as false to be, no friend speaks only fair. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read, prophet thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. With a worse man speak not, three words in dispute, Ill fares the better oft when the worse man wields a sword. I read thee, Lord Fafner, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. A shoemaker be, or a maker of shafts, for only thy single self. If the shoe is ill made, or the shaft prove false, then evil of thee men think. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. If evil thou knowest, as evil proclaim it, and make no friendship with foes. 
I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. In evil never joy shalt thou know, but glad the good shall make thee. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. Look not up when the battle is on, like madmen the sons of men become, lest men bewitch thy wits. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. If thou faint wouldst win a woman's love and gladness get from her, fair be thy promise and well fulfilled. None loathes what good he gets. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. I bid thee be wary, but be not fearful. Beware most with ale or another's wife, and third beware, lest a thief outwit thee. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. Scorn or mocking ne'er shalt thou make of a guest or a journey-goer. Oft scarcely he knows who sits in the house, what kind is the man who comes. None so good is found that faults he has not, nor so wicked that not he is worth. Read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest, great thy gain if thou learnest. Scorn not ever the grey-haired singer, oft do the old speak good. Oft from shriveled skin come skilful counsels, though it hang with the hides, and flap with the pelts, and is blown with the bellies. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest. Great thy gain if thou learnest. Uh, curse not thy guest, nor show him thy gate. Deal well with a man in want. Strong is the beam that raised must be to give an entrance to all. Give it a ring, or grim will be the wish it would work on thee. I read thee, Lord Fafnir, and hear thou my read. Profit thou hast if thou hearest. Great thy gain if thou learnest. When ale thou drinkest, seek might of earth, for earth cures drink, and fire cures ill. The oak cures tightness, the ear cures magic, rye cures rupture, the moon cures rage, grass cures the scab, and runes the sword cut, the field absorb the flood. Now are whore's words spoken in the hall, kind for the kindred of men, cursed for the kindred of giants, hail to the speaker and to him who learns, profit be his who has them, hail to them who hearken. I ween that I hung on the windy tree, hung there for nights full nine, with the spear I was wounded, and offered I was to Othan, myself to myself on the tree that none may ever know what root beneath it runs none made me happy with loaf or horn and there below i looked i took up the runes shrieking i took them and forthwith back i fell nine mighty songs i got from the son of bolthorn bestless father and a drink i got of the goodly mead peered out from othrora then began I to thrive, and wisdom to get I grew, and well I was, each word led me on to another word, each deed to another deed, runes shalt thou find, and fateful signs, that the king of singers coloured, and the mighty gods have made full strong the signs, full mighty the signs, that the ruler of gods doth write, Othan for the gods, Dane for the elves, and Valen for the dwarfs, Alsvith for giants and all mankind, and some myself I wrote. Knowest how one shall write, knowest how one shall read, knowest how one shall tint, I knowest how one make trial, knowest how one shall ask, knowest how one shall offer, knowest how one shall send, knowest how one shall sacrifice. Better no prayer than too big an offering by thy getting measure thy gift, Better is none than too big a sacrifice. So Thund of old wrote ere man's race began, Where he rose on high when home he came. The songs I know that kings' wives know not, Nor men that are sons of men. The first is called help, And help it can bring thee in sorrow and pain and sickness. A second I know that men shall need, Who leechcraft long to use. A third I know, if great is my need of fetters to hold my foe, Blunt do I make mine enemy's blade, nor bites his sword or staff. 
A fourth I know, if men shall fasten bonds on my bended legs, so great is the charm that forth I may go. The fetters spring from my feet, broken the bonds from my hands. A fifth I know, if I see from afar an arrow fly against the folk, it flies not so swift that I stop it not, if ever my eyes behold it. A sixth I know, if harm one seeks with a sapling's roots to send me, the hero himself who wreaks his hate shall taste the ill ere I. A seventh I know, if I see in flames the hall o'er my comrades' as heads, it burns not so wide that I will not quench it. I know that song to sing. An eighth I know, that is to all of greatest good to learn, when hatred grows among heroes' as sons, I soon can set it right. A ninth I know, if need there comes to shelter my ship on the flood, the wind I calm upon the waves, and the sea I put to sleep. A tenth I know, what time I see house riders flying on high, so can I work, that wildly they go, showing their true shapes, hence to their own homes. An eleventh I know, if needs I must lead to the fight my long-loved friends, I sing in the shields, and in strength they go, whole to the field of fight, whole from the field of fight, and whole they come thence home. A twelfth I know, if high on a tree I see a hanged man swing, so do I write, and colour the runes that forth he fares, and to me talks. A thirteenth I know, if a thane full young with water I sprinkle well, he shall not fall, though he fares mid the host, nor sink beneath the swords. A fourteenth I know, if fain I would name to men the mighty gods, all know I well of the gods and elves, few be the fools know this. A fifteenth I know, that before the doors of Delling sang, Jofroror, the dwarf, a fifteenth I know, that before the doors of Delling sang Theotroro the dwarf, might he sang for the gods, and glory for elves, and wisdom, Hroptatia, wise. A sixteenth I know, if I seek delight to win from a maiden wise, the mind I turn of the white-armed maid, and thus change all her thoughts. A seventeenth I know, so that seldom shall go a maiden young from me. Long these songs thou shalt, Lot Fafnir, sink in vain to sing. Yet good it were, if thou mightest get them. Well, if thou wouldst them learn, help if thou hadst them. An eighteenth I know, that ne'er will I tell to maiden or wife of man. The best is what none but oneself doth know. So comes the end of the songs, save only to her in whose arms I lie, or who else my sister is.